Welcome back. It's live here every Tuesday on the HAN Network, The Drive with Denise DiGregoli. The Drive seeks to connect people, places, ideas, and organizations together that move us forward mindfully and consciously. And every week, we start off with a mindful minute. This week, I want to tell you about a little trip I took to Stowe with my family. And we happened to visit the uh, Ben & Jerry's factory. And if you've had Ben & Jerry's ice cream, you know that it's, uh, there's a lot of social causes behind the brand. But what I was really noticing was their movement to get people to register to vote if they weren't already registered. And then I did a little more homework on it. And if you don't know, this week is the week that national uh, voters' rights regulation took effect 51 years ago and I thought to myself in lieu of everything that's going on let's be mindful of how important it is to vote regardless of your political beliefs and we don't talk about that here on the show don't lose your voice we're all citizens of America but let's be citizens of love light abundance motivating others to move forward. So I encourage you, if you're not registered to vote, please get registered to vote. You've got a few months before November and share your voice, share your citizenship, whatever it is that you bring to the table. So I, I hope that you got my email. I've got a fabulous guest on today who shares many of my same values. And when we were talking about her coming on, she said, the one thing I've learned after being an executive in the HR resources world for many, many years is never compromise your values. And don't let your job make you part of a codependent situation. And I thought, she needs to come on and move us forward. So I'd like to welcome Sonia Narcisse. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on the drive today. We have so much to share about your journey. Yep. So tell us a little bit about your background. Um, we know you're a Fairfield County native, but tell us about the HR role that you played for so many years. I'm sure you met many, many people. Mm -hmm. And what you mean about don't, let you, don't become codependent sure. um, in your life with your job. Sure. So I started in uh, the human resource field about 30 years ago. I've worked for some phenomenal companies. Um, and I started you know, as an HR rep all the way up to a CHRO. And um, actually, as a result of that, I was more in manufacturing and industrial. So it's a space that not a lot of women would be in, um, in the mining side, et cetera. And um, one of the things that became very evident to me during my career is that you always want to be in a situation where you can walk away from it um, if it's compromising your values. And, you know, that's, that sounds easy to do, but it, it is very difficult to do. Yeah, it doesn't sound that easy to me. And that's why I want you to share this with the people, because many times we think, well, they tell me if I have six months uh, savings, I can just split. Yeah. But there's many more tentacles to that. Absolutely. Okay, so give us some real nitty gritty on this. Yeah. So one of the things that was important in this is that once you know and understand that you don't want to have that codependent relationship mm -hmm. um, with your job, that means you're going to plan differently. What is codependent yep. in, in this case? Sure. So codependent means I'm financially reliant, 100% reliant on my job. Um, and outside of my job, I don't have any other existence. Um, so you are your job. That's right. Exactly okay. right. And so you start early on with the, the planning. And so I have to tell you, when I was 16, I actually started investing my first check from Dairy Queen into Microsoft. And as a result of that, I kept reinvesting, reinvesting. So by the time I was actually 21, um, I had established you know, a, a good size SNAG, if you will. And the result of that allowed me to basically know that if at any point in time I needed to walk away from a job because it compromised my values, I had the ability to do so. What, okay, now that's just incredible because <laughs> we know, especially nowadays, there are not many 16 year olds that are that insightful. Was there a part of your life? Was there a mentor, a parent, a role model? What gave you that insight to be like, okay, you're 16, take that Dairy Queen check, not to Marshalls, but over to Microsoft? <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I have to tell you that um, I think a lot of that was my own self-focus um, and always wanting to make sure I wasn't in a situation like um, my mom was, um, and she's terrific, but I didn't want to be reliant on my husband. Um, to be able to do what I wanted to do. I didn't want to ask for permission um, if I wanted to go out for a restaurant or whatever that might be. So I decided that the only way that I can do that is to invest the money early on 
so that it would be available for me. There's no chance coincidence that you're on this show for good reason. <laughs> I'm so thrilled that you said that. So yes, it's about, so codependent is looking for someone else's permission, relying on something else or someone else outside of yourself. That's right. By definition of what we're talking about today. Mm -hmm. So in human resources, I mean, you've got to play that fine line as an executive. Are you empowering your people like, hey, if you don't like your job, just save some money and boot it? Yeah. What are you saying? Yeah, so what I, what I do in my role yeah. um, is, and one of the reasons comp not compromising your values is so important, is in HR and probably on the finance side as well, yeah. you come across lots of situations that borderline on ethical. And you have to always be in a position to take the high road and to advise um, you know, executives and, and key leaders around that. That takes courage, so it's exercising that courage muscle. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that was important to me is I couldn't be everywhere. So my team, one of the things that I always um, shared with my team is that it's important for you to raise your hand if you don't feel comfortable. And raising your hand means calling me and indicating I've got the situation and we'll work it out together because mm -hmm. no one has all the answers. I certainly didn't have all the answers, but together what I find is you'll come up with the right answers to do what's right. Um, and as a result of that, um, the people that worked for me really grew strong in that courage muscle and knew that they had a strong backstop behind and with me. Did you find over the course of your tenure mm. and your executiveship that people allowed, especially nowadays, their values to shift based on what was going on? And how did you really get them back that that's what the drive is all about? Being mindful and being true to your integrity and your values. But I even find it in ra raising adolescents, right? You've taught them good values, but they shift with the times. Yeah. So what would be your advice? Yeah. So my advice, and the answer is yes, I've seen that. And my advice on that would simply be you need to find your true north, right? So mm, what, is that, yeah, what is that one thing that you absolutely carry with you all the time? That becomes your compass and your guide um, through all the craziness that we're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis or in, in life in general. What are common true no norths that you see? that are that you admire yeah so one of them is being respectful to myself um, and that's really important right I, that bears repeating yeah because especially as women nowadays with all the sexualizing that goes on in the media exactly. and otherwise be respectful to yourself what does that mean it means love yourself right it means um, having enough um, respect that you won't let individuals talk to you in a certain way it means that I value myself enough that I am going to take the high road and it means being centered with who you are right and for me respect myself means e even when I'm heated and irritated right. I'm still gonna respect myself so I respect you that's right and I'm not saying I don't occasionally lose my marbles <laughs> because I do yeah but I I know enough to reel it in and at least say I'm I'm sorry yes right exactly. I think that's part of the whole self-respect picture 100% so beyond self-respect what are other true north sure the other one actually is being respectful to others so oh. you just hit on that um, and that's really important to keep in mind right because as you say in the times that we live in nowadays it's easy to want to express your frustration but what I find is if I'm centered with myself and I respect myself and mm -hmm. I know that I'm going to respect someone else you're always in control control of the situation at that point. So, and we lose that so often nowadays because we allow ourselves to be flip. That's and, right. And we think because maybe they don't share our values, we don't have to respect them or our opinions or our ideas or our religion. Mm -hmm. Well then, we, uh, I don't have to respect you. And mm -hmm. how do we teach that, you know, as a human resources person, as a parent, as a person in society, how do we teach that? Yeah, that's a great question. One of the things that I was very fortunate in is I've actually lived in 39 different countries. Wow. Um, and so that could have been stints from six months to 24 months. That was Russia, all different places. And what that taught me is different is okay. And so what that means is don't judge it, just try to understand it. You don't have to like it, but understand it and know that different is okay. It's part of that diversity aspect. As um, Americans, if you've not been outside of the United States, it's hard to understand that. Well, let's just focus on Fairfield County where the crux of our fabulous viewers are. Like, it's okay to allow different in. Yes. And I, I mean, I'm not even talking about LGBTQ and all yep. that stuff. I'm talking about color, shape, size, religion, everything, because we get into that collective mindset, That's right. maybe here in Fairfield County, where we, we give it the lip service that everybody's okay and cool, but yeah. that's really not what's going on no. in our independent zip codes. That's exactly right, 100% right. right. 
So, so mm -hmm. you, in your plight, because we have so much to go through in this hour, you're this executive that's been all over the world and pretty open-minded, mm -hmm. and you're probably managing people in the New York, Connecticut area. Mm -hmm. What are you seeing, and how did you try to, for our viewers, we always try to get them to think things differently, reshape their focus, try something, come out of their comfort zone. How did you get your people to see things differently, to be more accepting, mm -hmm. respectful of themselves and others? Yeah, a big part of that is giving them the experience to do so, right? It's one thing to say it, it's another thing to experience it. And so I would put them on stretch assignments um, that literally they were uncomfortable in. Not to fail them, but to put them in situations that I knew would stretch their thinking, right? So mm. it's not just the race, gender, and all of those pieces, but the way I communicate, the way I think, think the way I lead are elements of differences and how do you respect that. So an example of that is I had an individual that basically um, really had a hard time working outside her, her community. So mm -hmm. I put her on an international assignment um, to China for two months. Um, and every day she would call me and she <laughs> did not like the assignment. But one month in, she changed and, and really took to heart what it means to respect those differences. So we, so I get the value piece. Yep. Let's move to the codependent piece. Mm -hmm. Are you open-minded, respecting yourself and others, and still codependent, or are you closed-minded and having hard time respecting yourself and others, and that makes you codependent? Like what makes me codependent? Yeah. Or does it change? Am I codependent because I'm insecure this year with this set of stuff, or am I just codependent all the time? Yeah, I think it because changes. we lose that, we use that word a little. Loosely, yes, but it's an important word. That's right. I, I think it changes to your point. Um, it depends. It's situational, right? Um, but the one thing that I have seen that's a common thread mm -hmm. is the insecurity, um, mm -hmm. and that is if someone is insecure in where they are in life, um, or they haven't accepted where they are in life, it makes it very easy to be, re be reliant on a job for that kind of positive feedback, if you will, or in relationships that give you that kind of feedback. Mm. And so insecurity is the one common theme that I've noticed um, that plays into being codependent. And when you spot that in one of your team members or maybe someone that's not on your team but someone that you're managing obviously in HR or even in your life, mm. what do you do to gently help that person see that? Because you can't just say, hey, you have victim mentality and hey, you're codependent because all the walls go up. Yeah. So there's a couple of things that I do. One is I think a, a huge part of being able to reach people is to role model what you expect, mm -hmm. right? And that's important. And so what I do is make sure that they see what I'm asking them to do, that it's very evident in my actions and my behaviors. And believe me, that's difficult at times, but you still do it. And then what I do is I take an opportunity to actually go to them and say, um, would you be interested in some feedback? And if the answer is no, then I don't give the feedback. Um, there's just no point in that. And nine times out of the ten, out of ten, the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. And that's when I gently go into feedback. And the number one thing I ask people is, where is your true north? What is your true north? And where do you want to be in life in the next three years? Forget about 18, five years. Just in three years, where would you like to be? But we spend a lot more time when I'm mentoring people on that true north. A lot of people haven't given mindful thought to that. So spectacular. So now, 30 years into it, you've made a very dynamic change. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are going to come back in segment two. We're going to talk about why you changed, where your true north was, mm -hmm. and where you are now. Because you have a fabulous new company. You've mm -hmm. left corporate, mm -hmm. at least for right now. And you've started something that's very, very passionate, which yes. I absolutely love. So listen, everyone. We're going to be back in just a few minutes. More with Sonia Narcisse and how you can move your life forward and follow your passions, codependent no more, and following that true north. You are such a fabulous guest. Thanks so much. We'll be back in Thank two you. minutes, guys. I really wanted something that felt like a home. Coming from a big house, I wanted the feel of a home as opposed to a condo. New Canaan is six minutes down the road. New Canaan's a beautiful little town to walk around. I work in Westport. My commute is 20 minutes. It's close to Westchester where my family is, so the location is ideal. There is no other town home that compares in the area. This is where I want to be. 
Walter Stewart's Market in New Canaan is your time-saving local shopping destination for the best of spring. Find many of your favorite products, from great specials on everyday items to the freshest organic produce, artisanal cheeses, and grass-fed steaks. Chop off your knives to be sharpened. Grab a beautiful bouquet of spring flowers and stop in next door for a wine tasting. Plus, their personal staff is always ready to lend a helping hand. So stop in to Walter Stewart's Market, 229 Elm Street, today, or shop online at stewartsmarket.com. For more than 50 years, Triple S has been Fairfield County's expert service for carpet, upholstery, and drapery cleaning. We provide the best in repairs and in-depth restoration, understanding fabrics and how to properly clean and restore them. Our staff will come to your home to clean your wall-to-wall carpet to perfection. We can also pick up your fine carpets and bring them to our facilities. With locations in Norwalk, Stamford, and Stratford, Triple S will get the job done fast, big or small. At Triple S, you can count on our people as well as our cleaning. Find us at triplesclean.com or 203-847-8. Mosquitoes, ticks, gone. Guaranteed. That's what Mosquito Squad guarantees as America's most trusted mosquito and tick control company. Locally owned and operated, over 90,000 homes have been protected by Mosquito Squad using their dual protection method for season-long protection, which includes barrier spray service for eliminating mosquitoes and adult ticks, as well as supplemental programs to increase tick control. They use only USDA organic options, which are safe and non-toxic. Contact them today at www.squadctny.com or 203-893-4309. Mosquito Squad. No bugs, no bites, no kidding. You're watching the HAN Network, and you're not alone. More than 1.5 million viewers have watched our live sports, news, and entertainment broadcasting since the network launched in August 2015. Advertise on the network that reaches Fairfield County, Connecticut's most engaged audience. Contact Advertising Director Jessica Murren at 203-273-7312 or email jessica at han.network. Welcome back, guys. It's Denise DiGregoli here on the HN Network Live every Tuesday with The Drive. The Drive moves us forward mindfully and consciously by connecting us to people, places, ideas and organizations that can move us forward. People that have had aha moments and have transformed their lives only to help others. There's no better guest than Sonia Narcisse who's joining us today talking about codependent no more and as an HR executive with so many years under your belt mm -hmm. you have d described to us in first uh, segment how to follow your true north, mm -hmm. your core values and to be prepared to move on from any organization at any time not to be compromised. Mm -hmm. So we come into segment two with what was your aha moment? Sure. You're mentoring everyone, you're, you're living the, the vita. Mm -hmm. What was it for you? Yeah, the aha moment for me was when one of my mentees actually said, you know, Sonia, why don't you do this more frequently and outside of just your professional work? And I thought about that and I have to say that I really focused in on that. I was very mindful, um, and what that means is meditating with myself, right? It's not that you're sitting around and listening to certain music, but it's being with your own thoughts and understanding what that means. And what came forward, the paradigm shift for me was, why am I not moving forward and doing this um, and mentoring more people outside of the industry that I was in? And so I decided that um, I needed to start shifting towards that. Um, and I made a conscious decision uh, in September that it was time for me. Oh, this past year? Yes. Okay, so new. Yep, yep. So I made a conscious decision to, new in the sense to exit the professional world of human resources mm -hmm. for a while. That's a big decision. It's a huge decision. And then making a conscious effort of coaching other people. And I don't, the mentoring and all of the coaching that I do, that's free of charge. Um, the only thing I ask is that they give back when they are where they want to be, that they mentor someone as well. So um, it's completely free of charge. And it's pretty exciting because um, I've mentored 93 people. Wow. Uh, and still mentor them. You know, I, usually it's a year long relationship, but it stays forever. Um, 93 people and they've made some significant inroads like I had someone that left South Africa moved to Australia and started working for a very prominent firm there but that was all through what's your true north what do you want to be and how do you want to lead that isn't that exciting so I was referred to you by my friend Regina Madwood of Capital Photo yes. so and and I always tell everyone remember if you're interested to be on the show please 
reach out to us here at HN Network or simply like Regina, refer your friend because it's been a fabulous connection. Yes. What I'm very impressed with is you followed your passion and you have this great set of products under the under the one company guys are Dasso. That's right. You have wine, jewelry, and soothing products. Mm -hmm. We are going to talk a lot about the wine, friends, so <laughs> hold that thought. But I don't know if you know anything about crochet. Can you guys get a nice close-up on that? This is handmade. These uh, stones are sourced from South Africa and hand crocheted together in this beautiful piece. And there's a set there. Um, the necklace, can you see the necklace? I mean, I don't know if you know anything about handwork, but this is just incredible. And you made all of these. Yes. So your inner artist came flying out. Yes. <laughs> now, was your inner artist always hanging around? It was. So did you do this in and around all your travels? No, no. I, I didn't. I, it's been suppressed, I will okay. tell you that. I've had, I have a lot Let's of... Let's take a look at that other piece. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of creativity. And I decided, I get the gemstones look at from this. South Africa. Look at this guy. And I design them. Um, so you'll see that's She's crochet. She's saying this nonchalantly, okay? <laughs> if anyone knows anything about crochet, my friend Linda and, and that crew, I mean, look at the work here. Yeah. And I'm not selling anything. No one gets paid to sell anything on this show. I'm just so appreciative of the art. Yes. I mean, it, it's incredible. Thank you very much. So you've got 30 years, you leave this corporate job, and your inner artist comes wielding out. Yes. Now, what about people that are sitting home going, oh, I, I, I'm so scared now. i got to shut the TV off because I feel threatened. What do we say to them? Yeah. Look, Don't be threatened. Absolutely not. You know, this is something I never thought I would be able to do something like this, quite frankly. Uh -huh. And I decided to learn about how to crochet, how to make it, and I was able to do it. So what I hear from you is my mind was open. Yes. And I gave it a try. Absolutely. So now we're going to get to the wine last. Mm. We've got your children involved. Mm -hmm. They're helping you with the soothing products. Tell me about those, yeah. because these are also specially sourced minerals as well. That's right. So thank you. Um, so the there's three product lines. Oh, and look at your fabulous children. <laughs> there They're they are. actually making these products at your home? They do, yes. So what I love about this is that it's empowering children. Yes. It's saying, you know what, you can take a leadership role. Absolutely. You can make a difference. And guess what, you can do something that all the other kids on the block isn't doing and still be cool. Absolutely. Okay. Um, and it's really neat because they, what they end up doing is they're responsible for the soothing side, which is bath salts, and we source everything from Israel from there in terms of the salts. Wow. And then they've designed this wonderful um, cupcake, um, but it's a bath bomb. Let's look at the cupcake, which is so cool. And all the it's all organic, so all the oils and everything are 100% organic, and they uh, make this and they sell it on our Dasso's website. So they run that business. And um, it's really interesting um, because it teaches them leadership. It teaches them how to run a business. And the great story I just want to share very quickly is when they first made their first $30, um, <laughs> they were so excited. And they said, Mom, how do we split this? And I said, we don't. You give it back to Mom. <laughs> and they were stunned. And I said, that's I'm the bank, so you have to figure out how you pay me back. So they said, well, at this rate, we're never going to make a profit. So what they ended up doing is actually going online, buying things wholesale, and they actually reduced their cost by 20%. Well, and you know, it helps to have a mom like you in the background sort of mentoring yes. them as well. <laughs> exactly. That is an awesome story. Now, tell me about the wine and how it connects to your Amy Beale Foundation mm -hmm. work and how you've actually traveled to South Africa to work with some of the students there. Yeah, sure. So um, the giving side of our DASO basically picks a charity, and it has to meet criteria, three criteria. One is there is limited or no government assistance. 90% of the profit has to go to the charity, um, and it has to be focused on kids. The Amy Bill Foundation in South Africa um, focuses in Cape Town on 6,000 children ages 5 to 25 wow. um, that potentially don't have, in many cases, mothers or dads because they've passed away um, of AIDS. This foundation provides um, schooling, it provides meals, it provides them um, job opportunities, coaching, and creating different products. So I go there every two months and I actually donate wow. my time. And one of the things I wanted to do was figure out a financial way to support them. And so I went through uh, private uh, labeling and came up with the uh, Sauvignon Blanc and the Merlot. And 5% of the proceeds go directly to the Amy Bill Foundation. So you, as far as I see it as a marketeer, have combined your true passions, mm. which include your love of children, 
mentoring, mm -hmm. fine, luxurious products, mm -hmm. creativity, and handiwork all into one yes. program. Yes. Now, for our viewers, some will say, that's a no-brainer, I do it all the time, but most are gonna say, oh my, I wanna make a change in my life, but this feels daunting. I, I don't necessarily know where to begin. Yeah. And I know from running f several businesses, starting any business is a whole lot of work. Yeah. Your HR background, what do we tell people? How can you be resourceful? How can you get out of your own way? Yeah. What's the first step? Yep. Yeah. The first step is, again, um, find that one talent, everybody has it, that was meant to be shared. And once you know what that is, mm -hmm. you can hone in and start um, working more on that. So for example, the jewelry, that isn't something that I ever you know, went to school for, but I wanted to do something like this, and then I started my research and connecting with other people. So expanding your network um, was a huge part of, how do I make this work? But you gotta find what it is that you wanna do. And like I said, it usually starts with that one talent that you were meant to share in life. So I would start that with a mind map in the center, and then I would figure out all the different things things that I would need to do to learn how to do that. Yes. And expanding my network would be one of the circles. That's right. Research on YouTube would be another and so on. Yeah. So you must have mapped this out a little bit. On a flip chart, yes I did. Okay. I have a flip chart at home and that's exactly what I did is, you know, it doesn't have to be a perfect business plan. I never started with a business plan. I started with creative <sighs> ideas and thoughts. Oh. Um, and then one of the things in expanding the network is I found people that had um, similar um, values, if you will, and you'd be surprised how many people will actually help you along yeah. in that process. Where would you find people of similar values? Because I think, um, you know, I think I know a lot of people, but then I still think about in the back of my mind for my next project, I need people with those types of interests yep. or values. Yeah, so quite frankly, where it starts with me is that the people that help me put this together in general. So you mentioned Regina. Regina designed my website. Mm -hmm. um, and from there, she has a network. Mm -hmm. And as we started talking more and more, she put me in touch with individuals. You know, mm -hmm. that's the power of networking. Um, and also, quite frankly, a lot of it came from my previous jobs that I was in. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a great network in that as well. So just ask. That's part of it, is just ask. Be OK asking. Yeah, and don't be afraid. You know, mm -hmm. I, I have made many mistakes and what I've done here. Good point in entrepreneurialism. Be open to be making mistakes. That's yeah. part of the road. That's exactly right. Yeah, there's part of the road. Now, what brought these three ideas together? Mm -hmm. I mean, because they are different ideas. They could all be a standalone website, a standalone business. Yeah, and that, quite frankly, was one of the things a lot of people were pushing me to, is why don't you have three separate websites? Mm -hmm. That didn't fit with my view of three passions, one world. And so I wanted the giving side, which for me was going to be giving back to the Amy Bill Foundation. Mm -hmm. And then I wanted my creativity side, which is the jewelry. And I wanted my kids to run a business. We just didn't know what it was going to be. Mm -hmm. And they actually came up with, you know, let's do something that's now, organic. No, I'm sorry to interrupt. That's is fine. that from products from travel? Like, what made you think to source the salts from Israel versus the wine from the broker in California versus the creativity that you found in yourself. Yeah, so the the bath salts idea, um, you know, that you always see things like that, right? But what I always looked at at the product is there's so many ingredients in it that aren't organic. There should only be, you know, a basic three to five ingredients that you use. And so that's how the organics came around. Um, the jewelry design, I love jewelry. Um, and so I decided, why why am I spending my money on someone else's idea? Why don't I create my own? And so I, that's how I came up with that. And the wine, uh, as you know, everybody pretty much loves wine. And I figured... <laughs> None of us here at hand love wine. <laughs> I figured, you know what? Um, why not put that to use in terms of a private wine label and um, give it back to charity? I love all of the ideas. Um, and normally you do that this at the end of the show. But tell people your, the name of the website in case they want to find you. Mm -hmm. Sure, it's ardasso.com. Um, okay, and we'll flash that again. Perfect. And, and we'll put it out in our links as well. Thank you. So if I understand you correctly, you are sort of doing this just word of mouth right now on social media. That's right, exactly. Okay, so all the more important friends, please jump on. If you're interested in the giving piece, the soothing piece, or the creative piece, it's just spectacular. We're going to come right back in two minutes, and we're going to talk about life after the aha moment. We're gonna get real and how we move it forward after we've decided that the aha moment has been the catalyst for change. We're gonna also figure out what we can do to live mindfully because after the aha moment, there's always a little bit of rough road. 
It's Denise DiGorgoli live here on the HN Network every Tuesday. So thankful that you guys spend this hour together with me. We'll be right back. Have a sports injury or a slip and fall that needs immediate care? Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care gives you direct access to an orthopedic specialist fast without an appointment. Biking, golf, tennis, soccer, whatever the sports injury is, sprain or fracture, Coastal Ortho Express can help. Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care, open Monday through Saturday, now in two locations. The I Park Building at 761 Main Avenue in Norwalk and 36 Old Kings Highway South in Darien. Or go to CoastalOrthoExpress.com, like them on Facebook. Warm weather, light breezes, boats are in the water. There's no better place to celebrate summer than the Dock Shop. Whether in Darien at 51 Tokenique Road or Westport at 609 Riverside Avenue, the Dock Shop is where you'll find everything you need to kick off summer. From the latest summer apparel to the newest fishing tackle, the Dock Shop will help you get the most out of your next beach day or harbor cruise. At the Dock Shop, you'll find a wonderful selection of items made in the USA and right here in New England, all with a distinct nautical flair. Boater, beach bum, fisherman, or simply love the coastal lifestyle, this is a unique place to shop. DockShop.com. At Cabbage Patch Nursery School in Ridgefield, playtime is learning time. Using out-of-the-box activities and programs in science, dance, Spanish, Taekwondo, and so much more, learning is made fun. Aside from interactive classrooms, our center features a sensory room, computer lab, and a large outdoor space for playtime fun. Our carefully chosen staff believe in a supportive, safe environment and keeping you updated on your little one's experience. Cabbage Patch Ridgefield, helping shape your child's future. 29 Farrar Lane in Ridgefield. Field, call 203-340-1250 to register today. When it comes to local entertainment, we've got it all. From movies, local artists, etiquette, and more. Watch HAN Arts and Leisure every Thursday at 2 on the HAN Network. What's happening up in Hartford and what's trending in the Nutmeg State? Join Kate Chaplinski and Josh Fisher on CT Pulse Live Wednesdays at 12.30 to find out. We talk to the leaders and newsmakers while breaking down the stories you should be paying attention to each week. With the help of HAN's editorial cartoonist Doug Smith, we take a humorous look at the news of the week. We talk about everything you were told you should avoid bringing up in polite company. CT Pulse Wednesdays at 12.30 on the HAN Network. Give your day a jump start with the latest news, sports, weather, and more on Coffee Break, live on the HAN Network, weekdays at 11 a.m. Connecticut news doesn't get any more local than on Coffee Break. And we're back. It's Denise DiGregoli again here at The Drive. You know, after you've had an aha moment and you've decided to change your life and move forward, sometimes um, it might not be so aha. So we're back to talk to Sonia Narciste about her business, uh, her new business after being in corporate America, mm -hmm. uh, HR exec, yes. senior HR, senior, senior HR yes. exec, lived in 39 countries, mm -hmm. decides to jump out without a huge safety net and I, I don't necessarily mean financial mm -hmm. just you don't know where you're going no and you start this business it's following complete passions maybe counterintuitive to some of your mentors mm -hmm. you involve your children mm -hmm. and you say eight months later you end up here on the drive talking about it mm -hmm. wow yeah what's next what are the bumps? Yeah, there's a lot of bumps. Um, look, there there was a lot of discouragement um, on my way to where I am today. Um, yeah. Isn't it funny how that just rains discouragement? Absolutely. A lot of people that, why would you give up your career? Which, yeah, I haven't given up my career. I'm just focusing in now on my passions. Um, so a lot of discouragement came in that. Um, and How did you fight that off mentally? Because I know when I'm starting something new and people get on my back about it, I, I it can shoulder me for a few days. Yeah, so there's two people that are my mentors um, that have been my mentors uh, all of my life. Uh -huh. um, so one for sure. Um, and then the second one is someone that's mentored me for probably about 27 years. And um, they're my rock, they're my um, my board, the Ardasso board. I go to them when I go, you know what, I should just give this up. Um, I'm not making any money. This doesn't make sense. And the number one thing both of them will say to me is, why did you do what you did? And what is your true north? And so they bring me back to... Be center. That's right. Exactly. And that's so helpful. So find someone that's going to do that for you. My husband will always say, 
don't listen to the naysayers. Yes. Stay the course. Yep. And he's actually one of my greatest advocates because I'll be like, oh my God, this isn't going to work, blah, 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 blah. And he'll be like, why did you do it? That's right. And, you know, it's like bringing you back to that passion. Mm. Exactly. And so um, I have that. And I think that's important for anybody that starts off down that road. The second piece of that is um, don't look back. Um, and a, a lot of people look back. You're not going that way anyway. Yeah. So just look forward yeah. and focus on why you were in there. It's that determination. It's that resilience um, that's so important. I like to say in the drive, rear view mirrors or the back that's gives right. us some information. Sometimes in a down day, you can hang back there too long. Yep. And you're moving forward. Now you're moving forward on the journey. When do you know to change lanes? Yeah. When do you know to get off the road? Yep. Like, for example, when do you know, and I'm not suggesting this for you at all, I'm asking more for myself now. Sure. When do you know to abandon what you thought was so fabulous or had such merit? Yeah, you know, I haven't come across that, quite frankly. Um, okay. One thing I have to tell you is that I am the happiest I've ever been in my life. That's uh, a huge barometer. Yes, and so I think that's important. Even though there's a lot of hard work that goes into to just doing this and running your own business, thinking about marketing, all of those pieces, um, I'm happy. Uh, and people that know me mm -hmm. have seen a very diff uh, big difference, not just in um, physical, but also mentally. I'm just very happy. Lighter. Yeah. Lighter. Yeah. So, so when you, what do you do? Because I know the kind of work that goes involved mm -hmm. to starting and running a business. Mm -hmm. Where do you go for your resources? Um, is it SCORE, Beyond Your Mentors? Give us some valuable resources that maybe uh, somebody that's viewing today can say, let me check that out mm -hmm. as a starting point. Yeah, so, um, you know, I have to think about that. I don't know that I actually have places that I go to. Um, I have more of those, the, the networks that I belong Your to. Your networks. That's right. And there, there is one thing that, quite frankly, keeps me very, very centered, and that is my one hour of working out and Pilates. Um, that's where I get my focus time, and that's where I come up with ideas, or I go, maybe we should do something different. But that, you need an hour of whatever you, you want to do. You've got to have that, and you have to have that at least on a daily basis. So I like to link those kind of things in a routine. I do my daily drive and my exercise in the morning. When do you do yours? Yeah, I do mine also in the morning. In the morning. Uh, and it can be, for me, it can be 5 in the morning or it can be 7. But I try to do it first thing. First thing. And then as you progress through the day, as we always do, you might come across... Um, things that challenge you or cranky people. How do you deal with people that are naysayers, cranky, get in your way, um, and get in your way more than once? Yeah. So I, I you know, it's it's easy for me to say this, but once you get more centered around this, um, is I just don't let them bring me down. You know, that's their problem, and that's how I always look at it. This isn't my problem; it's their problem, mm. right? And if someone's always trying to pull you down they're already at a point that it's very difficult to intervene on their behalf, if you will. Right. So that's important in terms of that. And the other thing I do at the end of the day, um, every day when I go, before I go to bed, is what were my learnings today? And I journal that. Wow. Yeah. Powerful. Yeah, what very were my powerful. learnings and how would I do that different? So I'm learning and taking the lesson in and applying it then. So oftentimes when people are using the book My Daily Drive, if they don't use it on a regular basis or they fall off, they say, oh, they kind of abandon it. Do you ever abandon accidentally or with thought your regular routine? No. No. So you're doing this consistently. Yeah, and that's the important piece is sticking to it. And how do you stick to it? Yeah, I think for me it's because it's it's part of me now and it's, it's, it's what makes me do better. Fuels your engine. Absolutely. So if you were, like, sometimes people, for example, on a Weight Watchers program, they fall off, they get back on, they fall off, they can't find that clickingness that makes it stick. Any advice there? What makes it stick? Yeah, have a goal in mind. And for me, one of the goals I have in mind more on the business side um, is I'm looking for that next charity. Um, and so I can't get to that next charity until this one is successful. So have that end goal in mind, and that's what keeps you focused on that path. So, you know, time is such a premium. Mm. And you are busy with your children, your family, all mm -hmm. this. How do you find time to go to South Africa and work with these children? Um, you make time. Um, and my kids know how important it is. And they themselves are part of that in, uh, as well. So, for example, one of the things I do is I read to the, um, the children in South Africa. My boys went and picked all their books out oh. um, that they're donating. And we give that away. So that's, that's one way 
um, that that helps. So if somebody wanted to, uh, a quick tip on how to make time, because you know in sales we say, if we say I don't, I don't have the time, it's, we don't want to make the time. Yeah. So how do we make the time? How do we, how do we make it important? Yeah. Um, again, that gets to priorities, but a big part of it is, is utilizing the day that you have in front of you. And so um, on average, I probably only sleep about five hours. Huh. Um, and so I'm able to take advantage of a few more hours, but I'm fully rested. Um, and I do take care of myself, so it's not at an, at an expense. Well, I always say self-care starts with self, Absolutely. and it's so extremely important. So as we move uh, closer to the end of our segment, where do you see this going, and what, what are your dreams for this? Yeah, I, I, you know, I continue to see this growing, um, and that uh, I'm able to continue to support charities um, that meet my criteria. That's, that's the number one goal for me. The jewelry is very nice, um, and I love doing that, but it's really the giving side um, that's very important to me and our DASO. And if you were to cast that, that magic ball for your three years, where, where will we find you in three years? Yeah, I would say in three years, you will find that Ardesso has expanded um, and that you will find me more engaged in the Amy Bell Foundation in South Africa, potentially maybe even living there um, for one or two months at a time. Um, wow. that's, that's what you would see. And my children that are, are really good at running a business, um, I think those are the things that are really important to me. I'm so thankful that you came on today, and I hope that we have the opportunity to see you again yes. and that you can share more because you're a font of wisdom and knowledge for you. human relations, frankly. Thank you. Um, tell us one more time how we can find you on the web. Yep, it's at ardasso.com, um, and you can easily go onto my website and you'll see my whole story and everything there. All right, well, I hope you'll visit us again, Thank Sonia. You very it has much. been a pleasure having you today. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks so much, guys. Listen, we are going to be back next week, Tuesday, 1230. And if you miss us, you know you can find us on demand. I hope that uh, you found today as beneficial as I did. And I hope you'll share this podcast with uh, other family, friends, and join us again. You can also find us on Twitter at HAN Network CT. Let me know your thoughts and feedback. Until next week, it's The Drive, moving you forward mindfully and consciously. Thanks for tuning in.